At the beginning of the year, Nico Company acquired bonds with face amount of 4 million at a cost of 3.7 million. Okay? And the company also paid 61,000 transaction costs. What is the objective? The objective of Nico Company's business model is to sell investments in the near term to take advantage of fluctuations in fair values for short-term profit taking. That sentence right there is very important. Bonds pay interest of 12% semi-annually on July 1 and December 31 and mature on January 1, 2026. Take note that we have a maturity date because this is a bond. The bonds have an effective yield of 14% on acquisition date and are quoted at 105 at year end. On July 1, 2023, the company sold the investment at 110. So, what are the keywords in order to know their classification? The keywords are, we are taking advantage of actuations in fair values for short-term profit-taking. And another one is, we sell investments in the near term. So, although their cash flows could be or just the sole payments of principal and interest, the business model is not hold to collect or hold to collect and sell because we will not sell them in the far future after taking some time. No, our intention is to sell our investments in the near term. Therefore, these are trading securities and trading securities are classified as FTEL. Now, let's do the journal entries. The initial cost, is debit trading securities. And since this is FVPL, remember, our transaction cost of 61000 is expense. Credit cash, 3761000. Perfect. Make sure, once again, to download our question copy in the description below. On July 1, we have our receipt of interest. And this is also an important matter. Please always check whether you are receiving your interest semi-annually or annually. In this case, it is semi-annually. We receive interest on July 1 and then on December 31 once again. And so, our classification, since this is FVPL, this is not supposed to be too hard. This is just straightforward. We would debit cash and credit interest income. And that would be based on our face value, the face value of our investment that is different from the acquisition cost. The face value of our investment is $4 million. So that would be the basis of our interest income. And the interest income, since this is FVPL, we just multiply it by the stated rate of 12%. Once again, this is semi-annual. So there's a need to multiply our interest by 6 months out of 12. 4 million face amount times 12% times 6 months out of 12. Two hundred forty, two hundred and forty. Cool, cool, cool. So the next requirements is what would be the carrying amount on December 31, 2022? How much would be the unrealized gain? And how much would be the interest income in 2022? So in order to know the carrying amount of our asset, this is FVPL. So the question is, how much is the fair value at year end? It says here that the fair value is 105 at year end. Therefore, this would be if the fair value stated in such manner at a quoted at price, Remember that the basis of this quote is on the face amount, not the initial cost. That's a common error that students often uh, have a mistake to. So 4 million face amount multiplied by the quote. 4 million multiplied by the quoted price, 105. This means that our face amount or our fair value is 5% higher than our face amount. Alrighty. And our carrying amount, since we have acquired it this year, let's compare the carrying amount is the acquisition cost initially, which is 3.7 million. And so 
our value increased. So we have an unrealized gain in profit or loss worth 500,000. To answer these two questions, our carrying amount at the end of the year is 4.2 million. Our unrealized gain is 500,000. And let's see our interest income in a little while. So to recognize our unrealized gain or loss, we debit trading securities and credit unrealized gain. Profit or loss. Always indicate where it is going. So once again, this is just like in our July 11 or July 1 entry, 4 million times 12% times 6 months out of 12. 240 and 240. Oh, this is the interest, right? There you go. <laughs> Almost get confused there for a second. And for the unrealized gain, that's the amount that we have computed. That would be 500,000 and 500,000. Once again, there are two entries at your end. Our unrealized gain and our interest income that we have received on December 31. So, how much would be our interest income in 2022? Take note, there are two points of recognizing interest because the interest is paid semi-annually. So we have an interest on July 1 and we have an interest on December 31. So that would be 480000 Alrighty. So you don't have to uh, keep scrolling up and down in our uh, file because you, I assume that you already took a screenshot of this. So you on one side, you have a steady data for this so that we could answer on 2023. On July 1, the company sold the investment at 110. Again, this is based on a quote. Since this is based on a quote, that 110 is compared and multiplied by 4 million. So, on, gen, on 2023, 4 million multiplied by, it's sold at 110. So, it's saying that our selling price is 10% higher than the face amount. And our carrying amount on December 31, 2022 is the fair value at year end, which is 4.2 million. And so there's a gain on sale for 200,000. Perfect. And so on July 1, 2023, let us not forget to first recognize the half year, the semi-annual interest income, debit cash credit interest income. 240,000, 240,000. Once again, that is the face amount, 4 million multiplied by 12%, multiplied by 6 months out of 12. Take note, since this is FVPL, we don't care about the yield rate, right? So that's it. And to recognize the sale, we debit cash. We have sold our investment for 4.4 million. The carrying amount of our trading securities is based on our fair value last year, which is 4.2 million. So there is a gain on sale worth 200,000. And that's how you account for the investment at FVPL. Now, let's move forward and account for this investment this time. What if it's classified as FVOCI? 